Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Everything Kratom, the podcast about anything and everything Kratom. Great to have you with us on this Tuesday morning. We've got a treat for you today. Today we're going to be talking with a Kratom advocate for a number of years now, an owner of Philly Kratom based in Pennsylvania. Sean Zamorano. We had a great conversation and I'm really excited to bring it to you today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thanks for listening. All right, so I'm sitting here with Sean Zamorano and he's the owner of Philly Kratom and he's a Kratom advocate and I'm really excited to learn more about him and what his scene is. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Jamie. Um, so it'd be great first to just hear a bit about your background, where you come from, uh, how'd you first learn about Kratom and you know, like what's, what's your first experience with it? Uh, so I heard about Kratom back in 2005. At the time I was a real bad heroin addict and I uh, just wasn't ready for it to believe that there was something out there that could take the edge off and not get me high and just kind of tickle the receptors that the opiates do was something that I just didn't believe back then. So um, fast forward to 2015, just got done serving a five year prison sentence for burglary. Um, And I got out, I was doing pretty well. I met my now wife, Megan, and um, I was out getting some paperwork for her divorce from her ex-husband and I was on the way out of there. I was riding my bike and I found heroin strewn all over the street. Now we're talking about Northeast Philly here. Um, I found heroin all over, $5,000 worth of heroin. So basically in street terms, that's a brick. And at the time I was clean and I thought I was going to stay clean and I was going to sell this heroin to make a little extra money. So. Philly, I'm not I'm not from Philly originally, so I'm in a strange city and I'm out there trying to peddle drugs and um, it just didn't end well. I started getting high again and, and my wife caught on to what I was doing pretty quickly and she gave me an ultimatum. She said, you got to stop what you're doing or we can't be together. You just got out of prison. You know, this is not the life that you want. So I did stop, but I was having a lot of trouble. Um, you know, it was a pretty big relapse with all of the heroin that I had, and and it was very hard coming off of it. And the Suboxone really wasn't doing it. I didn't like the way it made me feel. It made me very tired. And um, I remembered about the kratom, and we went to the smoke shop and we got some kratom, and 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 it kind of started there. Uh, the stuff that I got from the smoke shop, though, uh, wasn't really that great. And um, at the time, Menthol Kratom was like one of the big Kratom YouTubers, um, him and Carpo, Carpo Orr. And, and, you know, they said that they mentioned a few companies and I tried Life Force Kratom. And, and it was so much better than the stuff I got to, at the smoke shop. It was cheaper um, and it really helped really take away any kind of cravings for, for heroin or cocaine or anything like that that I would have normally had. So... Um, what I ended up doing, I wanted to spread the word. So I started my own YouTube channel, Philly Kratom. And um, that went strong for quite a few years, probably from probably from 2020 to, or sorry, 2015, all the way up until maybe 2019, even 2020. And then it got shut down by YouTube. But um, that channel was basically about Kratom reviews. And then when all, all the stuff went down, I believe it was 2016, when the DEA wanted to ban Kratom. Right. Uh, I kind of learned then what call call to actions were and, and learned what advocacy was. And I started doing the call to actions on the page and, and on Instagram and stuff like that. And um, the channel kind of evolved into like a news channel, Kratom News Channel, more than it was mm. just Kratom Reviews. And, uh, you know, since then, I've, I've always I've always advocated for Kratom because it, I do believe it saved, saved my life. But um since then, we've made some strides. You know, we went out to Maryland, I think it was last year or the year before, 
Um, we helped keep it legal there. We had to go in front of the House of Representatives and then and then the Senate, and we wow. showed up in strength there. <laughs> Dude, we showed up in strength. There were at least thirty consumers there, kratom consumers and advocates, and even Mac Haddow was there. So that was the first time I got to meet Mac Haddow. <laughs> and um, fast forward until now, and I'm still a kratom consumer. Um, I also own a kratom business with my wife, Philly Kratom Yearly for Your Life, and now we have this fight that I was telling you about earlier in Pennsylvania. And this all started because of a Kratom company. Yes. Yeah, um, so tell us more about that because I've, you know, before you reached out, before I saw your email, I had been hearing a bit about this. And I think everyone out there who's been kind of keyed into the situation with Kratom has where I've been seeing it on Twitter, on Reddit, on all these yeah. forums, people talking about Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. I've seen bits and snippets of news but I don't really have a full picture. The other thing I keep seeing is like the Pennsylvania Department of Health posting online about the dangers of Kratom and these public yeah. service announcements. So like, could you give us a full picture since you're on the ground there of what's going, going on? To be a, this is going to be a, a full picture here, man. This is gonna go back a little while. This one has some history to it. So um, I would say about, things are a little hazy with the timelines here so you know excuse me if i'm off a little bit but i would say about three years ago now uh yeah about 2019 um a kid had a heart attack on one of the major highways here in philadelphia and he crashed his car and, and he passed away um his name was caleb sturgis so what ended up happening the crate the, the the uh parents sued the kratom company uh, wrongful death lawsuit and really the issue wasn't the danger of the kratom as much as it was there were no labeling guidelines there was no recommended serving size there were no warnings about anything on there so uh, you know without having a little bit of guidance to go on it kind of puts all of the responsibility on the kratom company if something goes wrong so that that suit is still going on it's, it's about to be settled. So fast forward to now, we have a company called CBD Kratom. They're a nationally recognized company now. Um, and they opened up their 50th store in Radnor, Pennsylvania. Well, how this all ties in is the uh, Sturgises are major, they donate a lot of money, they're philanthropists. They know a lot of people in the news but they're actually from right there. So CBD Kratom never did any research. They never asked anybody in this town if they wanted a Kratom store. They didn't educate anyone to tell them what Kratom was and what it wasn't. So of course, the people in the town, this is just a big unknown to them. And of course, they're gonna Google online and they're gonna see stuff from the Mayo Clinic and the FDA, and they're gonna believe whatever they see. So um, not only do we have a bunch of angry residents in a pretty upper middle class town we also have a lot of information being spread around and we also have the parents the parents of caleb sturgis that are still trying to grieve the loss of their son and and have this lawsuit going on so it all can't it all kind of combined to make a perfect storm so now we're in this bad situation where they have this store that didn't even have the proper permits that's trying to open up in Radnor, PA, and you have a bunch of residents that don't want it there. But it's very hard to kind of ban Kratom in a little township. It's not an easy thing to do, especially considering Kratom is legal in Pennsylvania. So a lot of parents want to see Kratom banned in the whole state now because that's kind of like the only relief they'll get from having this store where it is. Mm. So... Where we're at right now with it is tonight they're having a meeting in Radnor again. We went to the first one. It was a huge Kratom bashing session. Um, I was actually the only consumer that spoke there. And I did get some good feedback from people. Um, I had some people come up to me after the meeting and, and kind of explain their position. But all in all, it was a bad deal. They're having another meeting tonight where they're going to introduce this township bill. And it's cool. You know, they don't want it within a thousand feet of a school. They don't want it within a thousand foot of a church, but the bill itself contains a lot of bad Kratom language in it. It's just a lot of misinformation in there. And and 
Mac Haddow from the AKA is going to see if he can talk to some people from there and, uh, and, and try to get some of the language changed at least. We don't have a problem with the bill itself. We just have a problem with some of the language in the bill. You know, whatever, something that people don't realize about Kratom consumers is we want to keep everyone safe. We want to make sure children don't have access to something that's not for children. We want to make sure we do have some recommended serving sizes on there. Um, we don't want to see anybody get injured or hurt from Kratom and, and, and Kratom's very safe when it's, when it's taken properly. So, you know, we want to see everybody safe and we don't mind these restrictions, but also we don't want all the, this misinformation from the Mayo Clinic and, you know, misinformation about Kratom deaths, because obviously you already know, uh, almost all of these Kratom deaths have been debunked at this point. So, you know, we're in a situation where everything out there is pretty much misinformation when it comes to Kratom deaths. So, Wow. Thank you for that context. It's very helpful. Um, I, like I said, I've been seeing this around a whole lot recently online. Yeah. Um, so that that's a really interesting situation. So you have this. Um, I, I think I've seen a lot online where someone knows someone or has a family member who dies. They have Kratom in their system and it creates this movement to ban Kratom. And, yes. and totally understanding that logic there especially being in a grieving family so not yeah. bashing anyone but that seems to be a template that have a pattern in this country and um so i think that's really interesting i had no idea um so i think what you said was interesting about the store you know cbd kratom coming in without asking the community educating the community that's something i hadn't heard of before do you so being as an owner yourself of a business so do you think that um, Kratom businesses have an obligation to kind of be educating the communities they're in about Kratom, it's especially given that it's not a well-known substance? Absolutely. Um, and the thing that really burns me about CBD Kratom is when you go on their website, they talk about how they're educating the people that come in their doors and how, you know, it's more than just a cash or, or you know, debit card transaction. It's supposed to be an experience where they kind of cater to you and tell you what alkaloids you need and this and that, but they didn't even take the time to speak with any of the commissioners in the town or anything. So, you know, they're kind of contradicting themselves. And, you know, I really don't think they care too much at all because they're selling kilos for $300. They're selling smaller amounts for a dollar a gram. How much can you really care about people's chronic pain and health and well-being and, and, and you know, the issues they're having? If the common person is coming off of drugs or has chronic pain off the street, you can't even come in and afford, you know, a week's worth of your product. Mm. So there's a few different reasons why I really don't think they care. And the thing that burns me too is they did the same thing in Illinois a few years back. So um, I'm trying to think of the town. What was the town, hon, in Illinois? Naperville, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, my memory is really bad. So, yeah. so Naperville, they did the same exact thing. They opened up a store there. The residents didn't want the store. And now all of the advocates and Kratom consumers are left with the bag and they have to go there and fight to make sure it doesn't become illegal. Oh, wow. So, you know, they're making money off of the backs of the Kratom consumers. And, and look, they are GMP and I believe they do donate to the AKA, don't get me wrong. But if you're going to do something like this, you should have your own team of people meeting with the people from the town and educating them, finding out exactly where they want to the store. So at this point, no love lost for CBD Kratom. Mm. And now we're kind of left with the bag. The good news is Mac did do a webinar the other night and he says things are looking pretty good as far as getting the Kratom Consumer Protection Act passed here. So, um, you know, if anyone's listening, what you can do on your end, if you're from Pennsylvania, and even if you're not, you can call the Pennsylvania legislators and 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 tell them, you know, you, you're a Kratom consumer and you support the Kratom Consumer Protection Act and you're a constituent. So, you know, it does mean a lot. Well, that and it can help. Yeah, I think that that's something that a lot of people, you know, they think that they're helpless when it comes to these things. But our democracy is still a democracy at the moment and we have the ability to change things and legislatures do have to listen to the local people i think local power is where it's at um and you know do you think that it's i've made the argument that it's pretty unique that kratom users uh, you know overwhelmingly are in favor of regulation of kratom 
And I feel like, yes. especially, you know, coming off of the idea that, you know, there was a huge push and continues to be for like legalizing marijuana in this country. Um, and there's a lot of debate around how regulation should look around that. But with Kratom, I feel like it's a unique circumstance where everyone's genuinely agreeing that there should be a specific set of regulations around production and who it should be offered yes. to. Is that something you think is pretty unique? Yeah, it is unique. Um, you know, I kind of I kind of put Kratom in the same category and, and, and I kind of let me explain myself as far as Kratom, Kratom does give you a certain feeling. It gives you a nice mood lift um, and it needs to be regulated similarly to alcohol mm. as in it needs to age restrictions and it needs, you know, it needs the restrictions on how it's manufactured as far as how it's packed and where it's packed and everything. Um, but of course, it's not anything like alcohol because, you know, you can take Kratom and you can go drive. You can take Kratom. You could go you could go fly an airplane and you're not going to have any ill effects. You're not going to have any dizziness or, or tiredness with it. So, you know, and that's something that I think people are a little confused about, too. This is not something that gives you a high. Um, it's not something that impairs your thinking or anything. So, you know, but I do agree it needs to be regulated, um, you know. Even if we can just get the age restrictions on it for now, until it's studied more, you know. But it's interesting because we were in Maryland a couple years back, and I was kind of up there doing my thing, talking about kratom. And the lady says, "Well, it sounds pretty safe. Why can't we give this to kids instead of instead of giving them pain pills?" And I hmm. said, "You know, you, you brought up a great point. It, it, you know, sense. I never even thought about it that way. But you know, we still have some more." still have some more human studies to do on it but what we can see is an immediate benefit to society as a whole because you have the people who were cut off with their pain pills who are able to get a little bit of pain relief from this and then you have all the people who are out on the streets that were addicts doing whatever they could to support their fix who are now working paying taxes and consuming a little bit of kratom so we see that immediate health benefit to all the people who are consuming it so in itself that's kind of like a human study but um yeah <laughs> you know uh we haven't quite we haven't quite gotten the human studies done yet apparently they're doing something in thailand right now where they're giving people just mitragynine the pure chemical mitragynine and they are doing human studies but we haven't had any done over here you know, but we're getting there. And I think when we do have the studies, we're gonna find that it's gonna, it's gonna show us the same thing as the rat studies, where someone can take a huge amount of Kratom and nothing's gonna happen to them except they might throw up. Yeah, yeah, I, I always, when I was looking through the eight factor analysis, the AKA put out at the end of last year, um, you know, like yeah. I look through all those animal studies, I always make the point of saying on the show, I'm like, I'm against animal studies. But with that said, looking at the animal studies, it's insane the amount of kratom, you know, yes. the specific alkaloids they gave to those rats and nothing bad happened or they found a little bit of a withdrawal after giving the equivalent of like, you know, like eating 200 salads of kratom for a human. <laughs> it's like, yeah. how could yeah. someone ingest that much plant material? Like it's a meal. It's a meal. You can't do it. Yes. So it's like, exactly. I don't know. I've always been profoundly impressed with with how much kratom animals can have without showing much of an ill yeah. effect whatsoever so that that is interesting i wonder um getting back to it was it rander pennsylvania radner radner um so with radner pennsylvania now there's this potential township bill um and overall, it seems like, you you know, you said there the wording isn't quite right, but there's a lot that people still agree with who are Kratom consumers. Um, yes. What, what exactly is it about it that, that you are not on board with? Um, just some of the wording. Um, they talk about Kratom deaths in there. Um, they quote the FDA, the Mayo Clinic, but then you don't see any, um, you don't see anything in there about how it's not a drug of concern anymore with NIDA. Um, you don't see anything in there about how the DEA withdrew their notice of intent to schedule. You don't see anything in there about how the World Health Organization just decided to leave Kratom alone because they see that it's actually helping, you know, it's helping people's health and well-being. So it's just a lot of negative stuff in there as far as that. And, and you know, I, I understand they're trying to get their point across to make sure that this 
gets passed, but the wording just needs to be changed. Mm. Do I have a problem with you wanting everything away from schools and churches? No. Do I think Kratom is something that they need to, to hide away though? No, but I don't think kids should, you know, be have it in their hands either. Yeah. Would a kid want to eat Kratom? Probably not though. I mean, it's just it's a powder, it's pretty bitter, so they probably cough it up. I don't know if you ever saw the cinnamon challenge when they eat like a <laughs> teaspoon of cinnamon, they shoot it out their nose. But that's kind of oh, like, yeah. you know, that's kind of like how, how Kratom is, you know, unless it's in capsules. But, um, <laughs> you know, Radnor residents brought up some good points though. Um, one of the points they brought up that I liked was how all of these different concoctions are being made with Kratom. You know, we have Kratom chocolate now, Kratom seltzers. They're two of the things that they sell at CBD Kratom. And, um, you know, these things can be appealing to kids. And, and you know, if you didn't lock it up or something, you know, a kid could eat it and, and, and get sick. They could throw up. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a proponent of not making everything into extracts and shots and, and drinks and jellies and gummies. I believe, I, I really do believe in Kratom in its natural form. Now we do sell extracts because honestly, you have to have extracts on the site just to compete because people want them. And there is there is a use for extracts. Some people have stomach issues and they can't ingest that much uh, plant matter. Uh-huh. But as far as from, from a legality standpoint and from an advocacy standpoint, I think you would see a lot of these problems disappear you took the extracts off of the streets because for example Caleb Sturgis and his autopsy he had the equivalent of a hundred grams of Kratom in his system a hundred grams yes. now wow. you would know that there's no way you can get that much Kratom in your system at once by eating yeah. plainly so now we're left to only think that he was probably taking some kind of extracts wow. so you know he had a heart attack is, is you know his cause of death was acute mitrogyne toxicity but you know he had a heart attack at the end of the day we don't know we don't know if if you drink seven extract shots of kratom extract shots if it's going to do something to your heart we don't know yet if if you have a pre-existing condition and you take these huge amounts of extracts what it's going to do to aggravate it so you know, there's a lot of unknown, and I really do think that if you take extracts out of the equation, you'd be in a lot better shape. And my whole thing is, if you need extracts, you can go right online and learn how to make it. It's not hard to make. Um, and really, the stuff you make at home in your kitchen is the crudest and, and most safe form of extract. Because, like, the stuff that I make here is, like, seven to one. So, you know, if you, if you cooked up seven kilos of Kratom, it would make one kilo of extract. So it's not very strong. You know, the stuff that they put, the stuff that they put in some of these drinks is either pure mitrogyne, which means that it has all the other chemicals stripped away from it. And it's just mitrogyne or it's, um, or it's like 50 X or hundred X, which means that they're using chemicals. Um, they're not making it like with water and vinegar. They're making it with like CO2 extraction. Um, some of it is made with, uh, Oh, I can't think of it now. There's one chemical, though, that's really bad that they use in Indonesia on the extracts, and I can't remember which one it is. But basically, it's either using harsh chemicals or CO2 extraction to get this super critical extraction, and it's very strong. And I've had some of it, and it's made my heart beat out of my chest. And I just feel like if we did away with the extracts, we'd be better off. And and the thing about it is, I was, I was saying this to Mike from the Kratom Guy podcast the other day. Um, you're in this situation where and I'm just going to go with somebody who's withdrawing uh, they're withdrawing off of heroin say or fentanyl and they're online and they're googling all this different stuff to try to make them feel better and they're very desperate just to feel normal because you know what they usually have to feel normal they're trying to get off of so they mm-hmm. look up and they see Kratom and they see the Kratom shots are stronger than Kratom. So now they're going to go with the Kratom shots. Then they see that DXM helps with restless leg syndrome. Then they see that uh, the anti-diarrheal medication will, will help them with restless legs. And if you take enough, it crosses the blood brain barrier and it'll give you some relief from opiates. So now they're combining Kratom shots and two over the counter things that they can get. And now they're in bad shape because 
what they don't tell you is when you take the uh, anti-diarrheal medication and it crosses the blood brain barrier that amount that it takes to cross the blood brain barrier is very close to the amount that is toxic to your heart wow now we have these three things in tandem with each other and now the, the, the now the person passes away well when you look at it on an autopsy not everyone's familiar with with the toxicity of these things they just see two over-the-counter medications and kratom right right but first they're going to blame the kratom but if you look if you look on uh, quite a few of the the kratom associated deaths you'll see loperamide loperamide that's the anti-diarrheal medication you'll see loperamide on there it was from people they weren't taking it you know they were taking it to try to cross the blood brain barrier and get some relief along with the kratom because they were withdrawn so now that's, that's you know so now they mixed all these things and you know we're in we're in a really bad situation wow that's fascinating i i had absolutely no idea about that this is all new information to me um that's yeah, this is that's, going back a long time <laughs> this is going back to like 2016 2017 <laughs> but uh, you know it's, it still helps to talk about it because i'm really hoping that somebody somebody out there hears this information and are like wow let's go back let's rewind the tape and look at some of this stuff again but as you already know the cdd uh yeah the cdd the cdc did their own study on the kratom deaths and they found out that most of them had some kind of other drug some kind of uh poly drug abuse involved so but then we still have seven of them. I think we have seven of them that they didn't find anything. But also, what were the concentrations of, of mitrogyne? You know, of hydroxy? You know, were, were they drinking massive amounts of kratom shots every day? Did they have pre-existing conditions? So, you know, there's a lot of other stuff to look at. And, um, you know, I think it's going to take many more years to sort through everything. Um, but we're gonna keep advocating because the longer that this stays out here as a big question mark, and the longer that states are just kind of in limbo like Pennsylvania is now, the right. more of a chance for this information to take take hold. Just like you said, um, it's, I don't think it's the Pennsylvania Department of Health, but it's, it's one of them private corporations that has a very similar name to like the Department of Health to make you believe that it's like a government entity. But they're the ones that are putting out all this information on Facebook and stuff. Uh, Kratom Fast Facts, I think it's called. Yes. So we're dealing with that too. But at the end of the day, um, Mac has done a great job. Ryan has done a great job in PA. And, you know, we do have a sponsor for the Kratom Consumer Protection Act here. And we have, last time I looked, we had eight co sponsors. Now that went to the health committee on the 8th of March. And, you know, we're just kind of waiting now to see what's going to happen here. But the AKA is, is very confident that we're going to get a win here in Pennsylvania. And to me, being through as many things as I've been through in Pennsylvania and, 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 and in the surrounding areas and advocating for Ohio when Ohio almost went down, um, to me, I'm going to cry that day. I'm going to cry uh, tears of joy the day that I can sit here and say it is now legal in Pennsylvania. You know, it never was illegal, but now as consumers, we are protected and Kratom is here to stay because the DEA federally, they don't want to ban Kratom because they see how much it's helping people. And finally, the AKA is getting the word out to all of these legislators and they're getting educated and they're realizing, whoa, this isn't hurting this isn't hurting my constituents this is helping them so you know it'll be a beautiful day and we're praying to get it done by the end of this legislative session which is in november mm. which that would be a hell of an accomplishment because you know bills like this usually don't get passed through this quick you know sometimes it can take years so you know to get that done would really be a miracle here and we're really excited and and you know me and my wife we've already been emailing away Senate and the House of Representatives <laughs> and, the, and the, the Health Committee, you know, the, we're there already, you know, and we're hoping that other people will be doing that too and that we can put this to rest here in Pennsylvania and, you know, help people in other states that are struggling, you know, especially some of these states where it's still illegal. In 2022, 
after all the information that we debunked and everything, it's still illegal. So, you know, it's one of them deals and, you know, we're, we're hoping to get it done in every state, you know, all 50 states and, and you know, eventually, you know, just like marijuana, you know, it's fighting for the federal legality thing. That's what we want. We want the federal. We want because federal at the end of the day, we want the FDA to have our backs. You know, now when, when Scott Gottlieb was with the FDA, he's now with Pfizer, of course. But when he was with the FDA, I hated the FDA. But, you know, he's gone now. And, you know, I just want to see the FDA do their jobs at this point. I don't hate them anymore. Um, just like everyone else, we want to work hand in hand with the FDA and, right. and, and, and get things sorted because right. it's just going to benefit everyone. So, well, you know, that that transitions perfectly into my last question for you today, which is um, I was going to ask you, like, what, what do you see as the future of Kratom? Where do you want it to go? Where do you think it's going to go? And, you know, going into what you were just saying, like, as part of that future, do you see Kratom advocates and, and proponents of Kratom uh, working hand in hand with agencies that have historically been against it? Wow. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I would like to see it legal on a federal level. Um, as far as the Kratom industry, you know, that's a tough one for me because I'm not GMP compliant. But we need age restrictions. Do I think that everyone needs to be packing out of a GMP facility? No, but I do think that everyone should, you know, have batch numbers. Um, everyone should be certified in some kind of food food safe handling. Um, I forgot what it's called here. Serve safe, like in Pennsylvania, it's a serve safe certification, and I believe it's the same in most most states that you go. And you know, you go for a couple days, and you learn about, you know safe food handling techniques and you get the thing so that's you know i'd like to see at least that at least age restrictions at least batch numbers and testing but for some of us who've been around a long time and, and you know kind of started this out you know it's going to be tough for everyone to go gmp but at the end of the day if that's what it takes to keep kratom legal i would love to see it um as far as this as far as the fight in the whole united states I do think we're gonna have holdout states, especially in the South, Alabama, Arkansas, them two states are gonna hold out. They're gonna be very tough to flip. Um, you know, we have seen, it's kind of funny because you can't really blame it on the Democrats or the Republicans. Um, no. we've, actually had more, we've actually had more Republicans stand up and fight for us, but we've also had a lot of bipartisan wins. Um, the congressional letter that the letter that Congress sent out a few years ago, the bipartisan letter. You know, we had some we had some very staunch Republicans on there and some some Democrats. So we've had support on both sides. So you really can't blame the Republicans or the Democrats. Uh, but I will say that, you know, these two states down there, Alabama and Arkansas, I, I believe they've mostly been Republican for many years. And, uh, you know, maybe with the way things are going in America as a whole, we'll see that turn. And maybe that's what we need is for the states to flip whatever way they're going to go. And maybe then we'll get something done in them states. But, uh, you know, I think 10 years from now, we're almost going to be to the end of this, 2032. I think we're going to be sitting here talking to each other, say, wow, that was a really tough fight. You know, it was it was a 20 year fight, but we're, we're getting things done now. And we only have a couple more states that are just holding out for whatever reason. Um, another big problem is we now have all the drug rehabs and, you know, they're trying to volley and get in there and, and get their piece of the pie from Kratom. So, right. So, yeah, it's we have a lot of opponents. Um, it's only gotten worse since the World Health Organization has announced that they're going to leave Kratom alone. Uh, very, very weird because you never <laughs> had all these mothers and stuff on Facebook. Um, you know, all of a sudden, there was like 30 mothers who said that their kid died of Kratom out of nowhere. And this happened right after the World Health Organization uh, made their ruling. So we're dealing with that. We're dealing with the rehabs. We're dealing with misinformation and people who just don't know anything about Kratom. And of course, people are always scared of the unknown. So 
we do have a long battle ahead of us, but I believe if people really, if people are really grateful, truly grateful for what Kratom has done for them, that they'll stand up and they'll call their legislators and, you know, they'll try to get something done and let them know how much it has helped them. Because if every single Kratom consumer did that today, we'd be looking at the end of this in a few years. But until we kind of unite and, and do that, it's gonna be a long road. Well, I, I hope to sit down with you again and talk about this, you know, down the road and maybe um, after we have a little movement in Pennsylvania and see what happens, it'd be great to yeah. check in with you yeah. again. But uh, yeah, Hopefully we're celebrating. But, yeah, <laughs> I'll cross my fingers for it and I'll keep, you know, let's keep our we're eyes right on next it. to each other. You're in New York and I'm in Pennsylvania. That's right. Um, that's right. You know, if something bad goes down here, it's going to spread like, you know, you already know Pennsylvania and New York are. Pennsylvania, New York, and Ohio are huge political states. So if anything That's bad right. happens, it will spread. So we got to watch each other's back. That's know? right. Well, we'll keep at it. And um, Sean Zamorano, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great. Great.